everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Papers, comma, please. This is a beta version. I hope you enjoyed listening to me with a smile on my face, because Papers, Please is a game that aims to turn your jovialism, your optimism that life is a beautiful bubble of video games and YouTube and happy cotton candy clouds, uh, and remind you that perhaps outside of this bubble, uh, life is instead just a shallow husk of, you know, dystopian, gray, Eastern European dictatorships. Uh, that, you know, seek to destroy your family and sickness and death and difficult decisions, but more than that, just mundanity. Uh, this is actually a very good game, but it's the kind of game that kind of like cart-like, cart-life I should say, uh, seems to want the player to kind of experience a little bit of boredom, a little bit of, of tension, and mostly just Again, a little bit of mundanity, but that's not a negative thing by any stretch of the imagination. I realize people hate just watching a dude talk at the title screen for a while, uh, but this warrants a little explanation. This is available uh, in a beta version right now on a website that I will link in the video description. It is created by one dude, you can see Lucas Pope down here, and that is his Twitter handle. And it's on Steam Greenlight right now, so I guess the most important link besides the one that will allow you to play the game for free is the one that would allow you to vote for this to eventually show up on Steam. But in any case, let's get started. I played a little bit more than an hour of this. Obviously, this is a work in progress, but this is going to set the stage. These pictures are just, you know, placeholders for now. So congratulations. The October Labor Lottery is complete. Your name was pulled, but this is not the Hunger Games. Well, at least not in a traditional sense. For immediate placement, report to the Ministry of Admission at Greston Border Checkpoints. Uh, and an apartment will be provided for you and your family in East Greston. Expect a Class A dwelling. So we are basically working for this country, uh, the fictional kind of pseudo-Eastern European Cold War era uh, republic called Arstotska. I hope I'm going to pronounce that correctly, but I know I'm going to slur my speech. But hopefully I'm not offending anybody, because as far as I know, this country uh, has never really re-existed, or it never really existed. So this takes place in the early 1980s, uh, and basically we have opened up our border, which is, you know, ostensibly a positive thing, as, you know, families that have been separated by these weird kind of border lines that have been drawn uh, can now be reunited, and of course people can flow back in and out of the country. But we're going to have certain restrictions, and we're playing the role of a border agent here, so I can, you know, flip open my shutters. We're about to see people file in through here, and basically our job as a border agent is just to check their documents and provided they fit in with the criteria that we have been given by the government or the Ministry of Admissions, uh, the MOA down there, uh, we let them in. If they have any kind of discrepancies, we don't let them in. So things are going to start out very easy here, they're going to get progressively harder, but we can see on our first day. Inspector, welcome to your new position at Greston Border Checkpoint. Stamp, passport, entry visa, using this thing right here, uh, and I'll close it right now because otherwise it's going to be in my face. Uh, return documents to the entrant. Entry is restricted to Arstotskin citizens only. Deny all foreigners glory to Arstotska. So let's get a feel for how the basic, uh, gameplay is going to work here. By the way, this news sometimes is a little bit important. We'll just drag and drop our documents over here. The game has a very simplistic interface, but it's also a very intuitive interface. You know, you have all of your possible, uh, actions, for now at least, over here. But when we drag them over here, they kind of get larger. Uh, every kind of interface element that you have to navigate is done so by using these books and uh, it's a little bit slow but you know they didn't have computers really uh, for this back in 1982 so it seems realistic as well so basically we're gonna call somebody using this button right here and that's gonna start our work day and time will tick down we're gonna be here from I think six to six it might be nine to six but first things first so we get this guy I wish I could pause it to explain what's going on but what we have to do we have to look at this guy and be like okay dude it does Everything match here? Does, you know, is it... First off, there's our date down there. It's 1982, so the expiration date is fine. He's our Stotskin, so we can let him in. He kind of looks like his picture. Uh, sure, you know, why not? Let's pull out our stamp here. There are some other things that we should do, by the way. But first things first, let's just approve him for that. Give him his document back and let him inside. Don't worry, the game will let us know when we make a mistake. I'm going to pull out the regional map here and bring up our Stotska, because it's important to look at the... Uh, Issuing cities there, which will let us know, you know, if there's a false is issuing city, obviously we don't want to let them in. So we'll get her papers here. She's not from the country. She's from Impor. So we are going to deny her because only citizens are allowed to come in at this present time. So it's going to start super easy here. I assure you it's going to get more difficult. And there is a metagame associated with this. There is a, like, not a day-night cycle really, but, uh, you know, the days will progress. She is also, she's from Republia. So she is, so she is not our Stotskin. So we're going to let her in. The learning curve on this game is actually- wow, she just told us to go to hell. By the way, sometimes these people will have stories or scripted dialogue. They, these are not like, um... I thought I called somebody in here, but I guess not. These are not, uh, as far as I can tell, at least randomly or procedurally generated, uh... 
that's Republia again, unfortunately for her. Uh, these are not randomly generated applicants or, you know, immigrants or people trying to get into the country here. These are uh, scripted as far as I know. At least some of them are. Some landmark or tentpole ones are. Uh, and this might seem like a bad thing because you're like, oh, maybe it makes replayability lower. But it actually allows them to also craft uh, a certain kind of narrative. This guy is just telling us in a sinister voice that it was a mistake to open this checkpoint. Uh, but yeah, it allows them to build in a, a certain kind of narrative, which is interesting. I'm not sure if this is going to be like a cart life in the sense that it is going to have kind of a story that is along with it, but you also have the ability to control certain elements of the gameplay yourself. It's almost got a little bit of an Oregon Trail vibe going on as well. So that's the end of our first day. Days usually take a little bit longer than that, but I think they speed it up uh, on the first day in case you're replaying it. So, this screen is actually really important because it introduces the kind of second element of the game, which is the metagame of managing your family. So we live with our mother-in-law, uncle, wife, and son. Uh, and, you know, we earn five credits for every person that we successfully process at the border control. So every, we process five people today, that was worth 25 credits. We have 30 credits of savings, uh, which we spent to pay for rent, food, and heat. Remember, we're living in, you know, presumably the Eastern Bloc. Things are gonna get cold here. There's food shortages potentially, uh, and you know, rent is expensive as well. So almost all of our savings are gone already, uh, if I had to guess. But we made five dollars today. We could also, if we wanted to, you know, turn off food or turn off heat, uh, but our family would get cold and they would get hungry and then they would potentially get sick and potentially die. Again, if you've ever played uh, Oregon Trail or Oregon Trail, which is a more awkward sentence than I expected it would be, uh, then you probably get a feel for how that works. So every day they're gonna add like new conditions for us, so it's almost as if they're adding a new rule in the game that is gonna make it a little bit slower for us to process uh, incoming applicants essentially. So I believe the rule today is that we are allowed to let in foreigners. Uh, so let's look at this. For t from today, foreigners are permitted as long as they have a valid passport. Your booth's inspection hardware is now installed. Uh, what this allows us to do is check for discrepancies. So if someone's uh, sex says male, but I look at them and they're clearly a woman, then I can like interrogate them by using this tool right here and highlighting those two discrepancies. Uh, what else do we have? Yes, I, I understand inspect mode. Uh, we want to have the rule book. And otherwise, we are good to go. So let's start letting people in here. I'm going to flip my shutters up. And occasionally some kind of uh, scripted things are going to happen. Hopefully we get one of those in this video, although I don't want to spoil too much. So let's check out our rule book here. Uh, you know, her expiration date's fine. She's definitely a girl. Her picture looks the same. We're just going to open our regional map, and she's from the United Federation. Uh, and Corista City is indeed a valid issuing city, so we're going to let her through, and that's going to be five credits for us. Now you might be saying, Northern Lion, this game is really boring. That's kind of the point. Again, I, I didn't play too much card life. But from what I understand of cart life, I just want to make sure this guy's yeah, he's a male. Uh, his passport is expired, though. This is actually perfect. So I can highlight this, highlight the date, and then uh, since there's a discrepancy, this will allow me to interrogate him. So I say I cannot enter with an expired document, or you cannot enter with an expired document. He says, I don't know what to say. So, um, you know, even if he said something in his defense, we probably would have denied him here regardless. Otherwise, if we make mistakes, not only, you know, does the motherland suffer, but we also face fines that cause us to lose money uh, and thus be less able to provide for, you know, ourselves, our family, our children, etc, etc. Uh, but yeah, as I understand it, you know, the, the mundanity and frustration involved in... Um, great rapid works. Uh, involved in card life, you know, not having enough time to do everything you want and not having enough money to actively provide for yourself, stay healthy and, you know, get good sleep and get your work done kind of factors into this as well. Uh, you want to get people through the border as fast as possible, but you also don't want to make mistakes because mistakes are incredibly costly. Uh, let's see what we've got here. So she's telling us to hurry up and just relax, lady. Uh, you know, she looks like the person there. She's meeting the bus soon. Uh, she's kind of rude, but at the same time, I can't let my own personal feelings get in my way here. So even though she's kind of a bitch, I mean, to be fair, there is like a 50 person strong line here. Uh, and I'm probably not gonna get through what, like six of them? So she is, uh, Camilla Golob from Kolekia. So let's find Kolekia here in our map. Uh, it's over there. Sure. Outer Greaves is not a valid issuing city, Kolob. Or, uh, Camila Golob. Unless I'm making a horrible mistake here. Uh, but if I do, the, the Ministry of Admissions will let you know right away. Like, as soon as she walks away, we'll get a fine. Well, we won't get a fine, we'll get, like, a citation. And the citation, you know, the first few times is gonna say no fine. But eventually, it'll be our last warning. So she's gonna say, hello, handsome, you look bored. All of her information, though, looks totally fine. So, you know, why don't we approve her and let her in. And what she's gonna do, this is kind of an overarching theme that plays into the story a little bit later. Uh, but she's gonna give us... 
uh, flyer for the Pink Vice, which is a, basically a brothel in Arstatska. But in any case, we're going to let her in here. And once things hit day three, it'll pick up and get a lot more complicated. This is basically uh, just a tutor tutorialization phase right now. So he's a male. Um, the picture matches up. He's from the United Federation. Uh, we already saw that Great Rapid was a valid city, so we'll approve that and let her th let him through. I should say, sorry, sir, I didn't mean to insult you there. Oh, but the point I've been trying to make is essentially that, you know, like cart life, at least as I understand it, frustration and even perhaps a little bit of boredom uh, is actually something that is kind of integral to the experience. It's not a game that necessarily needs... Oh, what happens here? Please tell me that you managed to stop that guy before he throws the stick of dynamite and blows you up. So, this happens sometimes in Papers, Please as well. Despite this guy's documents all being totally fine, uh, he just decided to be a renegade terrorist, basically, and blew us up. So that's going to cut our day short. Uh, and the, the major problem with that is that we don't get to serve any more applicants or any more, you know, our Stotskin hopefuls, which unfortunately means that we're not going to have enough money to pay for our heat now. So although everyone in our family is okay for now, that is going to change drastically as time moves on. And we've eaten up the last remaining bit of our savings. You must start with like 35 savings. So we are unable to turn on the heat this time. It's possible I could stop having food instead and then, you know, start turning on the heat instead, but let's do it this way, because, you know, food is, I don't know what's more important, to be honest with you. So after this stuff happens, and I'm not sure what would happen if I just denied that guy from getting through the checkpoint instead, I don't think there's, like, lose conditions or win conditions. I don't think it's, like, you win if you don't let the suicide bombers through. I think the story just kind of progresses uh, holistically or kind of organically based on what happens. At least that's the way it is so far, but remember, th this is a work in progress, so absolutely everything that I say and absolutely everything that you see, uh, if not outright false from the get-go because I'm ill-informed, uh, could change later regardless. So now, all foreigners require an entry ticket, but entry for non-citizens is still allowed. So now they're gonna have two documents that they're gonna have to give us, uh, and again, we can highlight discrepancies in order to uh, interrogate them. Sometimes we'll have to do that, because sometimes they just won't give us documents, and then we have to interrogate them to, to keep things going here. So let's get our third day going here. Who do we have first? She is a foreigner. She's got a... We gotta check the date to make sure this works. Yes, November 25th. She's from, uh, Great Rapids. Valentina Martinez. Her name looks right. So I think we will let her in. Don't worry, uh, I might seem like I'm doing really well right now. I'm not, financially. Remember, I, I'm not allowed to have any, um... Or I, I wasn't able to buy any heat for my family last night, and we do live in what is, I'm assuming, a frozen wasteland right here. Uh, but beyond that, uh, I will make mistakes as things get more and more difficult. Okay, so she's from Orb Obristan, but she does not have an entry ticket. So what we do is we go to basic rules, we go to foreigners require an entry ticket, and we click on where there's not an entry ticket, and then we interrogate her, and she'll say something. Uh, she has an entry ticket here. There we go. Valid on today. You know what, lady? You got off luck. Actually, actually check, because she's a little suspect for me. Regional map. Obristan. Lorndaz is an adequate city. So you know what? For today, you get off scot-free, but please give me that document next time. Because that put everything into suspicion. Miss Martinez from Eastern Europe. Oh god, what have I done? So we're going to draw in someone else here. That was lucky, because the thing is, as you get more and more bored of the game, you're more likely to make mistakes. And I use boredom... Uh, in a way that is not actually meant as a pejorative this time. We want Enkyo, that's fine. So she's given us, there's some kind of sex tourism going on in this country, obviously. I've only played through to like the eighth day, uh, so far. But, you know, she's legal, despite the fact that she keeps giving us, uh, these brothel things. She is absolutely legal to enter the country, so I can't stop her. But yeah, I've only played through to like the eighth day, so I don't know what happens if you get to, you know, day 30, if, if, if it even lasts that long. Uh, entry ticket is valid. Karista City, I believe that's normal, but uh, yeah, she looks like her picture. Don't worry, the Ministry will let us know when we make a mistake. Those suicide bombings, I think I've been hit by two of those so far. Uh, but interesting things will happen, like sometimes there will be a news report and it'll be like, this track star murdered his girlfriend, and it'll have a picture of the track star. And then, you know, the next day or a couple days down the line, you'll see the track star, like, go through, and you have to decide whether to let him in. Alright, so this guy's telling us we're lucky to still have a job. What an asshole. Uh... It wasn't my fault, man. All the documents added up. I'm gonna put the system on trial, Noah Pavlovich. But all of your documents are okay as well. Thank you for telling me to be safe. That is a, a nice thing to say to a border agent, actually, especially the day after a terrorist attack. Let's see what we've got here. Um, I want to find. The, I want to have a mistake be made, actually. But for now, I guess I'm just too good. His entry ticket is not valid due to the. Uh, 
uh, problem here because I said I can he cannot enter today because his entry ticket is invalid uh, So we'll stop this off like so and you know what we might stop this at the end of the third day here Just because I don't want to give away too much I hesitate to say story But there is a the kind of a, there's a narrative at least that's told there's not really a story told through cutscenes or anything like that um, but there is a narrative and and the the Part of the fun here, if that makes any sense at all, is like having your soul slowly be crushed uh, by, you know, doing your best to, to do right by both the country and the people that come through. Uh, yeah, this seems okay. And your own family, like trying to earn as much money as possible while being as careful as possible and following all the rules, uh, but still having bad things happen and realizing that, you know, eventually something's got to give. Either I'm not going to make enough money because I have to be super careful to stop people from blowing me up. Oh, it's this guy again. So I say, paper please, and he says, glory to Arstotska, the greatest country, and I have to be like, this This kept me uh, stuck for a while here. I've got to go, you know, entrance must have a passport, there's no documents here. What the hell, man? He's going to come back every single day, by the way. He's kind of the comic relief, at least so far, but maybe there's a touching moment afterwards. So I say, a passport is required, he says, you know, I'm going to come back tomorrow with a passport, which is good. I actually didn't get past this guy. Uh, until the very end of my last run, so I'm already making more money. We're only at like 1 p.m. here today uh, That entry ticket is valid uh, And Tegria was that a uh, Was outer grouse yeah outer grouse is a possible one there. Oh, but her passports expired good call me Yes discrepancy detected indeed later by the way we will gain the ability to uh, interrogate people We'll gain the ability to uh, search them with like a full body scanner and then we can like look at the pictures and try to You know assess whether or not they have weapon or contrabands on them and whether or not it's you know legitimate medicine or something like that uh, And we'll gain the ability to kind of like do our own kind of forensic investigation in a very superficial way Like we'll give them a fingerprint test and then you know check their fingerprints against our records of that person to determine if they have some kind of alias uh, This lady looks good to me. I always forget to check the sex I don't know, that didn't even, wasn't even intended to sound dirty, but it might have come out that way. But I always forget to check the gender uh, of the person coming in. So this is going to be, I think, our last hour of uh, Papers, Please on the third day here. So this guy looks normal. Well, he doesn't look normal, but he looks exactly like his photo. Uh, St. Marmoro, we, you know we've done that several times. We might actually, you know, it was a pretty productive work day and I didn't get fined at all. Uh, which means we might actually be able to make some money today. But you know what, on our last one here, why don't we F this one up just so I can give you a feel for how things work. So let's see if this, first things first, this guy does not have uh, an entry ticket. So the only way that we can fail this one is by actually approving him and letting him through. And I'll show you what the warning system looks like, not that it's necessarily important, but I wanted to show you that you do indeed get uh, feedback right away when you make a mistake. It's not always just, you know, 10 seconds later, a suicide bomber shows up with a grenade or something. Uh, this guy, again, does not have an entry ticket. What up with that, am I right? Later they will start to penalize you for making these mistakes, though. Entrance must have... Foreigners must have uh, an entry ticket, is what I meant to say there. So we'll interrogate him. Everyone else is leaving because the day's done. There we go. He's got the entry ticket. Now we'll go over all this. Everything else looks good. Great Rapids is indeed a valid destination. So we'll grab our passport over here. One thing I haven't talked about, by the way, I really love the animations. Uh, I think the animations are extremely well done, especially when like the silhouettes come into the frame and leave. Uh, and you know, for a game that's pretty simplistic, at least seemingly, uh, the the graphics are excellent. So I, I basically, I despite working as hard as I could today, I barely made enough to break even, and everyone is going to get cold. I should talk a little bit further because sometimes you know people will get sick, sometimes people will get hungry, and you have to tailor. Uh, your resources and spend your resources as you can at least I was gonna say as you see fit But you usually don't have an abundance so more moreover you're doing it um, Just kind of everything's a trade-off shall we say sure maybe they're cold now But if I turn on the heat in exchange for losing food, then they're gonna be hungry tomorrow people will get sick people will die It's not a happy game but despite that, it is kind of an engaging game. Even though, in a way, it's not really that much fun, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay sometimes even gets a little tedious or boring, but that's kind of, I believe, on an artistic level, the point. I will say from a, like a development or design standpoint, the actual process of like where in the world is Carmen San Diegoing the validity of the documents together and you know cross-checking them to make sure that the information is all valid surprisingly engaging considering you know that it's a job that the people who do it in real life probably hate on a day-to-day -day basis that being said this is much more of a game I think about making you feel a certain way and that certain way is definitely not uh, traditional or uh, akin to a lot of 
major games these days anyway, although on the indie scene you see this uh, now and again, no, now and again I should say. It's a game more so to make you think than a, a game to make you smile. It's a, it's a game meant to, I guess, educate as much as inform, or educate as much as entertain, but not really inform in a literal way. In any case, we're gonna go back to the main menu here and I'm gonna do my uh, end of video spiel. By the way, I think this Papers, Please song is awesome and would make a sweet backing trap for some kind of rap rap verse or something but in any case uh this is paper please it's in papers please it's in beta uh and if you want to vote for this on steam Greenlight, i would strongly encourage you to do so i am definitely going to there's going to be a link in the video description to get that set up um yeah that's all i have to say about this really you can download the beta for free from the website that i will link in the video description as well so green light campaign website for the actual game in the video description. I would strongly encourage you to, to play through this yourself if you liked Cart Life. For me, it's very, very similar in tone to Cart Life or in atmosphere to Cart Life. Uh, the exception is I'm too stupid to get anywhere in Cart Life, whereas in Papers, Please, it, you have to be incredibly stupid to not be able to progress, I think. Not to insult you if you got stuck, because I got stuck for a while too. I guess I'm just insulting myself, saying I'm incredibly, incredibly stupid. But in any case, created by Lucas Pope, there's his Twitter account, I guess if you want to give him some feedback or, you know, say thanks for the game or follow future updates for the game. Uh, I'm looking forward to checking out this game as it gets a little bit further into development. Not sure if I'm going to do any more videos. If, it, if the content would be suitable, I guess I would look for that at the, uh, the time of release, but in any case, strongly encourage you to support the green light campaign. Play through for play through it for yourself at the website in the video description below. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.